Are you looking for some fun Halloween themed ESL games to play in your classes? I'm Jamie from ESL Teacher 365 and in this video I'm sharing seven of my favorite Halloween games. I'll share some tips on how to adapt them for different levels and age groups so there's something there for everyone. The first game is called Monster Match and it's basically like guess who but with monsters. I'll show you what the board game looks like. We have all these cute little monsters and some different letters to identify them with. If you would like these exact slides, I will put the link down below where you can download them all for free. What you're going to do is divide your students into pairs and have them choose a monster, but don't tell their pair which one. Then they're going to take turns asking yes or no questions, eliminating the possible monsters as they go. So the goal is to guess their partner's monster. For example, if my monster is H, maybe my partner starts out saying, does your monster have three eyes? And if my monster is H, I would just say, no, it doesn't. Is your monster green? No, it isn't. Does your monster have two eyes? Yes, it does. So as they go through, they'll be eliminating all the different monsters. And if you want, they can take down some notes or this can be a memorization task. It's up to you. So they can play this in their pairs. You can also play this as a whole class. If you're doing this online, it might be a bit easier to play it as a whole class. Choose one student, they choose their monster, and then everyone else takes turn asking them questions. If you want to extend this activity more, here are some examples. You can also use this same game board to practice comparatives and superlatives. Maybe after your students have finished playing, so they guess each other's monsters, now you can have them compare them. If your student had monster H and their partner had monster E, now you can have them either speaking practice this or you can have them write down some sentences. For example, monster E has more eyes than monster H. If you want them to practice some superlatives, then they're going to need more than two monsters, obviously. But this is another way that you can extend the activity a little bit, and you can also use this with your fast finishers. You can also create a writing task for this one. After they've chosen their monster, have them write about their monster's typical Monday. What does that look like? Looking at this guy, what do you think? What does he do on a Monday? Probably not too much. If you have young learners, this might be a bit tricky, but you can still use this same game board. What you're going to do is have them find a monster. So for example, find monster F. Then you're going to ask them some questions. How many eyes does your monster have? And then they could look at monster F, locate it and tell you monster F has two eyes. This is good for practicing body parts or colors, whatever you would like to practice, but you can use the same game board in a few different ways. The next game is called Witch's Brew, and this is one where your students are going to get up and they'll be running around and having a lot of fun. This is perfect for online teaching. In the classroom, if you're going to do this, you're going to need to bring some objects in. What you're going to do is chant all together bubble bubble stir the pot then choose a student and they're going to choose something to add to your witch's brew for example let's add a shoe they can choose what they want or you can give them some parameters if you want them to choose a clothing item or something of a color if you want them to choose something of a certain size it really depends on what you want to practice but imagine that your student said, let's add a shoe. Now all of the other students are going to get up and run around their house or their room and try and find a shoe as quickly as they can. If you want to make this competitive, you can award points to the first person or the first team who brings back the item. Then you would chant again, bubble, bubble, stir the pot. Choose your next student and they choose the next item to add to your witch's brew. The next game is Ghost Whispers. This is a game that you can use to practice vocabulary or pronunciation, things like minimal pairs. What you need to do is choose the set of words that you want to practice and get that ready for your students. 
If you're playing this as a whole class, you can choose one word and send it in a private message to your student and they are going to need to be highlighted on the screen. They are going to say the word without making any sounds. For example, this is a Halloween word. See if you can guess it. Imagine that my teacher has sent me this word and I need to say it without saying any sounds. It's harder than you think to not make any sounds. So what you can also do is play some scary sounds in the background in case your students make any sounds by accident. But what word do you think I said? Leave it down in the comments. You can have your students either guess by writing down each word and then go through each student and then review it at the end, or you can have them write it in the chat right away or say it right away but it's a really good one to practice using their mouth and all the different parts to make the different sounds. If you're playing this in the classroom, what I recommend doing is having everyone in pairs and having them at opposite ends of the room. You can give them a whiteboard and they'll have a list of words. So one list for one partner, one list for the other, and they'll go through their words and the other person has to write down what they think they've said. I love to put scary sounds in the background, really distract my students to make it a little bit harder, but this is a fantastic game for online or in person. Just a tip, if you have a monolingual classroom, you'll find that this game will be easier not necessarily because they're all pronouncing everything perfectly, but because they're probably making the same mistakes in their pronunciation when they're forming the different sounds. If you have a classroom with learners from all over the world, they will find this activity a lot more challenging to be able to recognize what they are saying, but it can be a lot of fun and a good challenge. This next game is another classic that you've probably played before, but I have prepared you a nice Halloween scene that you can use. What you're going to do is show the image to your students for about two to four minutes, and they're going to try and remember as much as they can. If you want to make this a bit of a writing activity, then I recommend using fewer minutes and allowing them to take some notes quickly. But if you want them to practice their memorization skills, then use the longer time and have them just try and remember what they can. Then you're going to show them the second scene and have them pick out the differences that they see. Let's try it out. Here is the first image. You can pause the video here if you want to play the game. Remember, fewer minutes to write down some quick notes or more minutes if you'd like to practice it memorizing. And here is the second image. There are 13 differences. I recommend pre-teaching the vocabulary before you do this so your students feel more confident when they are talking about the differences. If you find that this particular image is a bit too much for your students, then I recommend creating your own on Canva. I use Canva to create this image and some of these Halloween images are Canva Pro only. But if you use the link in my description, you can get a free trial of Canva Pro for 30 days so you can create your own Halloween image like this one. Next up, we have a review game called Survivor. You are trying to be the last team standing out of the pit of doom. This is what you're going to use for the game board. This game is really fast paced because you may have one team that's winning, winning, winning. And if they answer a question incorrectly, they're going to fall back into the pit of doom and they have to start all over. I recommend creating some questions ahead of time. You can use things like fill in the blank. Maybe they have to pronounce or spell a word, some yes, no questions, write a sentence, or you can even do some Halloween trivia. You can use ChatGPT to quickly find some questions for you for that one. Here's an example of how you can use Koala Go to play this game online. So imagine that you assign a different color to your team. So maybe the purple team and then we'll have the red team. You can use these lines for each team. Now imagine that your purple team answered the first question correctly. So you're going to draw their dot on. Maybe the second team, they also answer correctly. Now the purple team 
Their second question, they don't get it right. So I'm going to use this eraser tool right here and I'm going to erase their dot and then draw them back in in the pit of doom. So now they are starting from nothing. Let's imagine that the red team, they do a fantastic job. They get their next question right. So I'm going to move them up to the next spot. And you will just keep playing like that until one team reaches the final orange question at the end. If you're playing this in person, you can just draw this game board on your board or you can also use your smart board to play it too. Next, we have Spell the Spell. This is one where your students are going to get some spelling practice and you're going to be repeating the word, so great for pronunciation as well. You can play this individually, in groups, or as a whole class. What you want to do is spell five different words. Imagine we are practicing some basic words with little learners such as bat, cat, hat, rock, and sock. So I might choose one student to spell it or it could be the whole class. So they go through these five words and spell them and then it's time to cast the spell. I recommend having something like a cauldron, a witch's hat, a pumpkin, and put some little things in there that you can pull out as a surprise after you say your spell. Remember those words from before? We would say them all together. Bat, cat, hat, rock, sock. And then maybe, ta-da, you pull out a little skeleton hand or whatever you have. To make this even more fun and challenging, you can give your students ways to say the words, to spell them or to say your spell. For example, spell the word like a monster or in a whisper or like a ghost. You can do this for each individual word as they spell it or if that's just too distracting, then you can do it for the spell. You could also have them get louder as they say each word or clap the syllables together. Just get really creative with how you say it. For the last game, we're going to look at how we can play a similar game for three different levels. For each version of the game, your students will need a flashlight or their phone so they can light up their face. For lower levels, what you're going to do is have them share something that they like or dislike. For example, I like to swim. The other students are going to listen and then if they agree, they're going to light up their face. And if they disagree, then they won't use their flashlight. This is a fun way to get them listening to each other and participating together. For the intermediate version, you can play never have I ever. So the rules will change a little bit, but they're practicing present perfect. For example, one student will say, I have never run a race. Now when we play never have I ever, if you have done this thing, then you will use your flashlight. If you haven't, then you won't. For example, I have never run a race. If I have, which I have, I will illuminate my face. You can also ask them different follow-up questions. So anyone that has illuminated their face, you can say, okay, how far did you run? Which race did you do? Where did you run? Different follow-up questions. And of course, students can ask each other these questions too. To play the advanced version of Flashlight Confessions, you're going to have your students tell a story and it's going to be either real or fake. Then. At the end, all the other students are going to vote. If they think that the story was real, they're gonna shine their light. If they think it was fake, then they're not going to shine their light. If you think that your students need some more support, you can give them a few minutes before you start the activity to think of their stories and write down some quick notes, or you can do this more as a fluency activity and they just have to go off the cuff and see what they can come up with. If you prefer to do this as a written activity, you can also have them write down their story and then read it out loud. It's up to you and what you want to practice. I hope you feel inspired to try some of these Halloween games in your classroom. Remember that you can go to this website to sign up to get the PDF version of today's slides for free. 
if you try out any of these games in your classroom, I would love to see it. So make sure to tag me on Instagram or YouTube at ESLTeacher365. Happy Halloween and happy teaching. Woo!